This is problem number eight from section 2.1. And this problem it says the accompanying graph shows the total distance S traveled by a bicyclist after T hours. So we've got the hours here and it goes up to four and we have the distance traveled. And then it asks us numerous things. Uh, it says using the graph answer parts A through C. And in each part they have numerous questions. So let's go ahead and use the graph to figure this out. Which of the following is a bicyclist's average speed in miles per hour over the time interval 0, 1? So from 0 to 1, what's the average speed for this bicyclist? Well, I would say if we take 12, right, that's the max. The minimum is 0. So if we take 12 minus 0, that would be 12. And we divide it by 1, right, which was the hour we'd get 12 miles per hour. So I think that makes sense right there. Which of the following is a bicyclist, bicyclist's average speed in miles per hour over the time interval 1 to 2.5? So from 1 to 2.5, at 1, he's at 12 miles per hour, he or she. And at 2.5, that's 24. So 24 minus 12 is 12. And how long did they go? Well, they went for an hour and a half. So what's 12 divided by 1.5? So 12 divided by 1.5, well, 1.5 times 2 is 3, and 3 goes into 12 four times, so that must be 8. So the bicyclist's average speed is 8 miles per hour over that time interval. Which of the following is a bicyclist's average speed in miles per hour over the time interval 2.5 to 3.5? So 2.5, they're at 24. 3.5, they're at uh, 30. Well, 30 and 24, that's a difference of 6 over 1 hour. So that means that the bicyclist's average speed was going up at 6 miles per hour pace. Part B, which of the following is the bicyclist's instantaneous speed in miles per hour at t equals one half? So at a half hour, what's the instantaneous speed? So at a half hour, the bicyclist's speed looks to me like uh, three point, well that's the distance it was traveled, right? So let's see, the instantaneous speed Uh, it says 12 miles per hour, so I think we're going to have to sort of guesstimate at this. So at a half, we're at, we've gone, that'd be about three, right? So we've gone three here. So let's kind of mark one half comma three as our coordinate. And we know that, let's see. At 1, they're at 12. So let's just go 1 at 12. What's the speed then? So usually what we want to do is we want to kind of pick different spots that surround, like we're trying to find a secant slope. We want to pick different spots that surround the 1 half. But I think that if we pick this spot along with the 1 and the 12, we can figure this out. So 12 minus 3 Right, 12 minus 3 is 9 over 1 minus 1 half, which is a half. We divide those and we get 18 MPH. So what are our choices here? Well, our choices are 12 MPH, uh, 62, negative 62. So it's definitely not negative. Either of these don't make sense. And 62 is way too high. So I think this is just 12 miles per hour. Although we got 18 here, at that particular moment right there, it hadn't bent up as much. So I think 12 makes sense. Which of the following is the bicyclist's instantaneous speed in mile per hour at t equal 2? Well, at t equal 2, uh, the bicyclist's uh, miles per hour, well, they're not gaining any distance here, are they? All right, distance traveled. No gain in distance traveled at t equal 2, so I think that would be 0. 
And then, which of the following is the bicyclist's instantaneous speed in mile per hour at t equal three? So at t equal three, what's the speed? Well, the, if you look at this curve and you compare it to our original curve right here, this one's a little flatter. Uh, so I think that it's gonna be less than 12 miles per hour, but it's still going positively. So it's definitely not 32, it's less than 12, so it's gotta be seven. And you could probably go through and do a little calculation such as from 2.5 to 3.5, uh, we did that right here. We got six miles per hour for the average. So seven would make sense there. Which of the following choices gives the maximum speed in miles per hour and the time at which it occurs? Which of the following choices gives the maximum speed in miles per hour and the time at which it occurs? So the maximum speed of the bicyclist is, bicyclist is 49 miles per hour and it occurs at t equal one. So t equal one, 49 miles per hour. I'm not sure that that makes much sense. Uh, the mi maximum speed of the bicyclist is at 49 miles per hour and it occurs at time is 3.5. Well, 3.5 up here, that's flatter than it was at one. So it's definitely not 49 there. So this doesn't make sense. I'm crossing this one out because it's flatter than this one here. So it's definitely, this is not the maximum speed. This one's more of a maximum. Question is, is it 49? Or in this case, it says, uh, yeah, 24. So it says, we know that at 3.5 hours, that doesn't, it's not working there. Okay, that's definitely wrong. So it says the maximum speed of the bicyclist is 24 miles per hour and it occurs at t equal one. So we go to one. We know that from, let's see, zero to one, it was 12 miles per hour for the average, right? And from 1 to 2.5, it was 8. Neither of those are really close to 49 miles per hour. So I'm thinking that this one's got to be out because that just doesn't make any sense. It's got to be 24 miles per hour. Uh, and it occurs at t equal 1. And if we were to check this maybe a little bit, maybe we pick this point here. And we pick, I don't know, this point here. Let's just estimate this at 3 quarter. So we end up with at six or uh, 0.75 comma this coordinate here 0.75 comma six, and then we pick 1.25 comma 18. Let's do the subtraction here: 18 minus six over 1.25 minus 0.75, that's gonna give you 12 over 0.5. Oh, 12 divided by 0.5, that's 24. So it's gotta be part B. Uh, 